Hey guys, Charles Calloway here, financial advisor, small business owners and their employees, and I'm coming to you live from a law firm. Uh, you, you may, if you've been watching us for a while, you know we were at this law firm before. It's, it's Hamrick and Galanis, and my friend here, Lisa Galanis, is with us today. And also sitting here in the middle, the, the really good looking guy in the middle with the tie here, this is Neil Isaacs, and he is Raleigh's business broker. And I'm excited about you getting to know him as well. So the question is, why are we here today, 15 on the scene? Well, we're, we're all running across some challenges for small business owners right now, it, namely two things. One, uh, where do we office? You know, where do we have our business set up? Do we own it? Do we lease it? Another big challenge I'm running across, and I think you guys can concur, is staffing. You know, uh, I'm, I'm talking to business owners now where their, uh, their turnover used to be like non-existent. They had people there, well-trained, a lot of experience, and now they're starting to see people uh, rotate out and they're trying to restaff and retool and build up. So guys, we got some things to talk about. Yes, we do. <laughs> so before we dive into the, the challenges of this conversation, Let's tell, tell us a little bit about your law firm. Tell everyone about what's going on with your law firm. I'd love to hear what you're doing. Thanks so much, Charles. Uh, Hamrick & Galanis is primarily a residential and commercial real estate law firm. We do close a lot of real estate, but we also do estate planning. We do do some probate work, and we do a lot of corporate formation. So we work with people who are building and starting new businesses, but with people like Neil, business brokers, we also work with those people who are getting ready to sell a business. Maybe it's one that's been in your family for a couple of generations, or one you just started, and it turns out COVID was really good to you. <laughs> and now's the time to cut your losses, get out, and enjoy what you've built for yourself. Right. Well, Lisa, I tell you, I, one of the things, uh, your superpower is planning, you know. <laughs> I, the last I was struck by the, when we were together before, before the country shut down and made adjustments that were necessary to protect the community, you had already done the things necessary for your staff. And so I'm excited to hear about how things turned out with that as well. Absolutely. So, Neil, you're, you're like a rock star here in the Raleigh area. Everybody knows you as the Raleigh business broker. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I love about what you do, man, is that you, you actually had a business and you sold the business, but I don't want to steal your thunder. Tell me about what sure. you do. Tell everyone what you do. Thank you for having me here. It's, it's a pleasure to share some some experiences, some stories. And yeah, you're you're right. People are struggling with with how to to run a business in these times. So the people that I tend to help, they come to me. They have a successful business. They've made it through COVID. They're making money, but they don't want to do it anymore. They they want to find a buyer. They don't know what it's worth, and they need guidance on getting the price. Find the buyer, get into the whole process, and, and my joke is, business brokers do it confidentially. Right? They don't <laughs> want anyone to know. And when they're in real estate, that's a complicating factor because the the major listing sites you start with the address, right? And if you're trying to sell a business confidentially, you put the address out there, and, and the whole world knows. So right. we help them with all of those challenges. Wow, that's interesting. And, and one of the things I know, listening to your advice from the past, is that this is the quarter. If they want to get it done this year, Absolutely. this is the quarter they need to nail things down, right? Yeah, yes. the, the research indicates it takes seven to nine months in general mm -hmm. from start, from so saying, that, let's do this, to sitting at an attorney's desk and getting that check slid across the table. <laughs> um, so if somebody wants to do it this year, they need to start now. Right, especially if they want to do something else afterwards in time enough to make the capital gains wash. Absolutely. Minimize your tax again. Right. Okay. All right. So let's talk about this challenge, guys. And I, I'm just going to throw this question out there, and then you guys will just kind of talk about it. How's that? Sure. All right. So let's talk about uh, should is it better for a business owner, small business owner, to uh, buy or lease? And let me give you a scenario, hypothetical. Okay. These, this is this is happening all over, and I've experienced it watching some of my clients. I've been in the business for a while. I've been in a cushy five-year, ten-year lease. I'm coming to the end of the lease and unfortunately is at a time where now the owners of the property are looking to sell. They want to gain, get their benefit, they want to get their profits out. Okay. Uh, so now I'm in a situation where the new owners probably aren't going to want to renew my lease. And so I'm having to go find a space. Uh, and I'm having to decide, should I buy it or should I sell it? How should I be thinking about that if I'm a small business owner? From our perspective, the first question is, can you afford to buy it? Because the down payment is going to be significant. It's not buying a house with 3% down. Commercial property is going to take 10% down if you have the right attorney and the right bankers uh, to up to 20% down. 
So you need to have some money set aside for the purposes of doing that. We're in an unusual position. We're leasing here, and like a lot of people, our landlord sold. We have a new landlord. We are lucky, he is wonderful, and we are staying in this location. Mm -hmm. But when we opened our third office, because we have Nightdale, Garner, and Smithfield, we opted to buy the office in Smithfield. It was a good opportunity. There is commercial space available outside of Raleigh. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing. If your business has always been located on New Bern Avenue inside of Raleigh city limits, mm -hmm. finding a place that A, is for sale, and B, you can afford, right. is something that you're gonna have to take into account. I like owning the business because I have, or the building, because I have more control over what I can do in it. But on the other hand, if the air conditioner goes out in this building, it's not my problem. Right. So there are things I think you have to weigh as a business owner, are you willing to take on the extra debt, and are you willing to take on the extra expense? Right. I love I love how you're saying the first question is, can I afford it? Mm -hmm. And you kind of look at the different pieces of that, because if you can't afford it, I don't care how great of an opportunity it is, it isn't an opportunity. Exactly. What would you add to this? Here? I would say as the business broker, when business owners come to us and they say, I want to sell, one of our first questions is, tell me about your space. Have you secured your space in the long term? That could mean ownership, but it could mean a long-term lease. If they have five plus years, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But if, if they are running to the end of their lease, maybe the, the owner of the real estate wants to sell. Maybe they don't want to assign that lease. Mm -hmm. The value of that business, maybe they make a lot of money, but it could be un untransferable mm -hmm. because the, the current owner doesn't want to move their business and guess what their business buyer doesn't want to move it either even even more so than the current owner mm -hmm. so we listen for long-term secured space either ownership business buyers always want the option to own so right. if it's, it's leased can, can I buy it or if they are leasing it how, how, how far out right the last piece I'll add to that is and it may apply in your case is is it a, a market rate so when what do you I mean by that, when I hear, well, we've got a great deal on this space and my landlord loves me, mm -hmm. I get concerned, <laughs> right? Yes. Because I think, well, the landlord's not going to like that you are retiring and we're finding a new tenant. They may not like them as much and they may, they will say, now's the time to raise the rent. Mm. The business isn't making more money, but their expenses just went up. Their cash flow went down. The business value just went down. Right. Right. So a great deal on rent is not always a good thing. I listen for, we pay market rent. Mm -hmm. Our landlord would probably give the same deal to the next business buyer slash prospective tenant in the space. Right. Well, you guys can probably see why, why a person like Neil Isaacs is very important, if, whether it's on either side of the table, buying or selling. And talking about the business as a, as a whole, do you think it's important for the business owner to right, if they're thinking about buying, they're actually changing the dynamic of their offer, or they're, they're, they're making their business more complicated. Now they're not just in the business of moving XYZ product or providing XYZ service, mm -hmm. now they're becoming real estate investors in yeah. a sense, right? So I would love to hear what you, what you feel, how they should evaluate that. Should that be second or, or first priority or not a priority at all? Is that a clear enough question? Well, I would, I would answer that simply by saying a business owner who mm -hmm. owns their real estate has two separate things to sell. Okay, okay. They have the option to sell just the business and become a landlord mm -hmm. or to sell the business and the real estate. Together. Okay. But those should be mutually exclusive or they should be two separate options and um, it, it opens up a lot of different deal structure and there's the tax, tax implications and things so like that. So think of them as separate. They evaluate them separate, them separate, and it goes back to that market rent. They should charge themselves rent. They should set up two different corporations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they should treat themselves as their own landlord. From, I love, from I the love job. that. I love that. I'll give you some experience. We okay. were. I bought this firm five years ago, and of course, I came in. The building had just been sold. The new landlords had agreed to a shorter lease term mm -hmm. with George Hamrick, my law partner, and I came in. They agreed to extend the lease term for me, same terms. Um, we are the kind of people that would make Neil have apoplexy. We are a really phenomenal rent structure. 
Um, our landlord has been very good to us. We've been in this building since it was built 35 years ago. Wow. We've taken this part of this building for 35 constant years. I can't move this law firm. Hmm. At least that was my perception when I first got here was okay. I can't go any place. I can't even afford to go across the street. <laughs> Someone will come to this building because they didn't always know the name of the firm or the name of the attorney, but they knew they had been here mm. and they still do. So our Garner location is a rented space in the PNC building. Our Smithfield location is an owned building down on 4th Street. Those are distinct from this. We will likely be in this building for another decade or longer mm -hmm. because this building is as much a part of this law firm as George Hamrick is a part of this law firm. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's, it's a different type of dynamic like Neil, Neil was speaking to. If you were to come and buy this law firm for me today and my lease were up in three years, I don't know if that goodwill is actually going to be worth the same to you if we have to move down the road as it is in this building. Mm -hmm. So those are things that you have to think about. Mm -hmm. The longevity of a business is a phenomenally good thing, mm -hmm. but it also means you don't have flexibility in some areas you might have had otherwise. Right. right. Well, guys, you can see there's a lot to this. So I want to encourage you, if you're thinking about this, this is your particular problem, you're thinking it through, I want you to reach out to these professionals and uh, we're going to post their, their the link to their website and their phone number will be there so you can reach out to them and ask them questions. Is there any, let me ask you this as we close this, if there was a particular book or particular um, podcast or some resource that you're, you're talking to that person that's struggling with this, uh, this particular challenge as, as a small business owner, what would you recommend? I'm making a long question so you can think about it. <laughs> what would it be, if, if any? Oh, goodness. Well, uh, the E-Myth Revisited, Michael Gerber, oh, it's, it's not specific to this particular topic, but it is specific to working on the business, not in the business. I love it. Yeah. So that that's a classic that I recommend to any business. Owner. Okay. The Revisited one, because it's been revised so many times. It's a classic. Yeah. Lisa. One of the most important things for me has been my own trade journals because the Bar Association, both the North Carolina and the local Bar Associations, the I'm licensed in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Bar Association, all put out a lot of information that's helpful. Your insurance company has information that's helpful in determining about what you need to know when it's time to buy or sell a business, buy or sell real property, um, who you should be talking to, because it's not just the three of us. I know I want to sell my business. I'm going to call my broker and he's going to list my business. I'm going to handle the sale of the real estate. You're going to handle where all my money goes once I've made it, but I also need a CPA because I need to talk to them. As, as Neil was saying, if this is the time to sell the business so that it closes this year, you also need to have your exchange company lined up so you can do your 1031 exchange. So there's a lot of things that your trade journals will contain that are stories of other people who've bought and sold businesses in your industry because we all know if you're Johnson Auto Body, your purchase of your business is entirely different than Don Lee's purchase of his auto business than my purchase of this law firm. Right. So we all kind of have things that we can learn from our from our various associations and trade journals, and I think that's a great place to start. Plus it tends to be written in a language that is accessible when we're first starting this out. It's not so highbrow that I have to go and have half of it translated by an economist so that I can understand it. It's, right. writ it's written for me. Right. So that's a great first resource. I love it, I love it. Well guys, that's what we're gonna do. That's, that's all we're gonna cover for today, but uh, thanks for joining us. Again, Charles Calloway of 15 on the scene. And this is my friend, Neil Isaacs, the Raleigh Business Broker. Check me out at raleighbusinessbroker.com. Lisa Galanis, Hamrick and Galanis, Attorneys at Law with offices in Nightdale, Garner, and Smithfield. See you next time.